Taxi 11 right now on Duma FM, more talk, more music. Welcome to an amazing evening with the golden voice of Rickton Majani on Character Matters show. Let's be together from now till 7 p.m. Uh, it's going to be a good time. I can promise you that it's going to be a good time. So wherever you are, kick off those shoes unless you are driving and uh, get yourself a glass of water. And uh, yeah, let's be together. Let's love our nation. Let's chat with each other. 613 right now on Juma FM, more talk, more music. Welcome back to your listener. Today I have someone in the studio that uh, you'll be happy to know that he is nothing but a people's person. Pastor Mohokwan. Yes. I always give my guests an opportunity to actually introduce themselves. So, Remo Okwani, good evening and welcome to Character Matters Show. Thank you so much and thank you so much for hosting. Just to kick it off, maybe if you could just introduce yourself in terms of all your amazing names and where exactly you come <laughs> from in Botswana. Okay, uh, this is Muluki Mokokwani. Uh, I'm from Serowe, but I grew up in Palape. Um, I'm a pastor um, uh, since 2002, uh, so almost 20 years now. I'm married uh, 18 years. I have uh, three beautiful daughters, uh, one 17, the other one 12 and 8. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yes. Are they all girls? All girls. Wow, amazing. <laughs> I amazing. specialize in girls. Yeah, I know, I know, man. <laughs> yeah, and, yes. um, People usually say, you know what, um, I'm coming from this big, big family, or some would say, no, I'm just coming from a small family, or maybe I'm just the only child there. How is it like for you and maybe the ratio of boys to girls, the family <laughs> you are coming from? Uh, I'm the firstborn, and I have a brother and a sister, so there are just three of us. Oh, okay. Yes. Amazing. So you are the firstborn. Yes. So you are the father, you are the I'm, overseer. I'm, I'm the big boss. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. Yes. And uh, something that uh, people would normally talk about is you know what I'm not just here to steal other people's space and oxygen but I'm here to add value one way or the other you know uh, there's someone who said there are two days to celebrate in life the day you were born and the day you discover why mm. why you were born so if one way to ask you what your life purpose is what would you say uh, to heal the broken-hearted and to mend broken relationships mm. that's my main thing wow, wow. Yeah. amazing amazing and we obviously all come from family somewhere and uh, they say it takes a whole village to raise a child you may find that there were a number of people as you were growing up who actually contributed uh, in your livelihood especially at an early stage mm. and there could be this specific person who you say you know this was the most influential person you know they were very impactful in my early childhood who would that be for you that's my mother uh-huh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> my mother basically did everything right yes. and one life lesson I mean we talk values and we say you know sometimes we pick certain values when we are pretty young and uh, later on you look ourselves in the mirror and we say you know the person that you are seeing here uh, were it not for this particular value which I picked as a child and it has molded me to be the who, the person that I am today which one would that be for you I, I think the strength of my mother mm-hmm. uh, you know she, as a single parent she raised the three of us under very difficult circumstances mm-hmm. she was facing her own you know um, challenges herself but she managed to uh, raise all of us and you know today i think we are her pride all of us yeah <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. yeah you know we also pass through a certain uh, group or sect um, and that is going through schooling mm. and i always take a moment just to recognize teachers because i believe they've played a very big role in mm. molding us or in helping us to become who we are uh, at junior high there was this uh, american peace corps guy he, he, he was, he, Mark Kronk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the guy came in, um, I, I was struggling with meds at the beginning of Form 1, but I, I had always been good with meds. Mm-hmm. And uh, he came in the second term and I became an A star. Wow. <laughs> because of his support, how he believed in me, and we kind of became friends. Right. And so that's the guy that I'll never forget. You're talking about one of your children being 17, you know, and they start going 13, 14, and they go all the way to 19, and yeah. they're labeled teenagers. Yes. It's a stage that we've gone through. Of ourselves. course, yeah. What challenges do you remember that you battled with as a teenager? Uh, myself? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was a troublesome uh, teenager. 
I started sniffing glue and benzene at a young age. Uh, and uh, by standard six, I was drinking Black Label Lion and Roomba, some hot stuff. And I was always in trouble. My mother, uh, that's why I really appreciate her. She had to deal with so much mm. because I, I was constantly looking for trouble. So yeah, I've done stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, somehow you bounce back. I mean, here you are. Yeah, I uh, am. What would you say probably helped you at that time when you were a teenager to probably bounce back and focus and uh, get on with your life properly? My father. When my father started showing interest in my life and that he desired uh, for my life to be better, and he actually wrote a letter to me, uh, you know, about his concerns for me, that changed my life. I just thought, how can I disappoint somebody who has shown that he actually wants the best for me? Right. I think most of my um, misbehavior growing up was because uh, I felt the, his absence. So the fact that he showed interest in my life at that stage basically changed me. Yeah. Yeah. And it contributed in shaping you. In a huge way. Right. Yeah. Interestingly, we are here on a show called Character Matters and looking at it like a coin, on one side we agree that, you know what, character does matter. It does. But the other side we are saying, no, let's have a platform maybe where we can discuss character issues because they are important, they shape us, they shape those who are coming behind us or after us, our children and everybody. Yeah. Maybe you could just share with us your perspective when it comes to this idea of character. I mean, looking at Botswana, I mean, this is our lovely nation which we love so much. Um, what's your impression about uh, the quality of character that we are seeing amongst ourselves? Uh, it is not very impressive. Uh, we have uh, lots of social ills. There are a lot of things that uh, are not going right. Uh, uh, in our society, you can see clearly that this issue uh, and uh, this particular topic that uh, you you are on every Wednesday is very critical to get all kinds of people to come and talk about it, mm -hmm. so that we can see how we can correct uh, this. But it's definitely an issue that needs to be addressed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's quite interesting. You should be saying that uh, because. I say characters like foundation. Mm. Uh, you look at a building, it looks very nice and everything, but if the foundation is not right, then mm. when it comes to human beings as well, I mean, we are gifted. You know, yeah. We've got um, people who are gifted, who are talented one way or the other, but the element of character becomes mm. an issue. Where, where do you think maybe we, we need to start paying attention to the element of character so that we just don't miss it? Mm. Yeah. You are right in mentioning the foundation. Like you said, uh, every building, the foundation must be really solid, must be proper. If you are going to have a, 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 a really tall building, the foundation must be really deep. It must be reinforced properly with steel, strong steel, concrete, everything. You need to do the right thing. And when the building starts cracking and it comes down, usually the question is, what was in the foundation? What happened uh, right down there? And for humans, uh, the foundation of human beings is the family. A uh, family is very, very critical to how our personality will pan out and how our character will be. Even like us, uh, and so, Character is very big uh, and family is very important in molding that. What I would say is that family is supposed to provide at least three things to every child. A sense of belonging, a sense of security, and a sense of identity. Mm -hmm. Every child must feel like they belong where they are, otherwise they're going to look for that belonging in the wrong places out there. Every child must feel secure from home. Uh, where they feel they are safe. If uh, parents are always fighting and they're arguing about the kids and how the kids should, you know, all the things and there's violence in the home, uh, children grow up with a lot of insecurities. And when you are insecure and you go out into this world that is really rough, uh, the world will pick the insecurities and they will abuse it. Mm -hmm. And when you have a sense of belonging and a sense of security, your identity can be properly formed. And here's the beautiful thing about identity. When you know who you are, you will be led to your purpose in life. Right. And when you are led to your purpose in life, it's very easy for you to find fulfillment in what you do. 
because you see how you are made the talents that are inside of you the gifts that are in inside of you whatever that is inside of you when you have connected with that uh, it becomes very easy to find out what you were born for what why were you sent to earth? What is it that you came for? And that is your purpose. And the beautiful thing, like I said about purpose, is that when you are doing it, fulfilling your purpose, you are fulfilled in life. And when you are fulfilled in life, you are not going to look for fulfillment in the wrong things. Yeah. There are many people who feel that they are not fulfilled. And so they're thinking they'll find fulfillment in, you know, partying all night with alcohol, in drugs, in, uh, you know, sexual relationships things that uh, they hope or material blessings for example uh, owning that car living in that home or you know having that you know, hot girlfriend or whatever uh, they think that's what will fulfill them lots of people who have money they still are not fulfilled because something is not right in who they are and because they don't know who they are it's hard for them to find the thing that fulfills them and that is the purpose for which you were born right well that's profound that's yeah. profound we also want to look at reality, Pastor. Mm. Uh, reality is uh, any given audience. Mm. Usually, I think I wouldn't be too off to say more than 50% of them are fatherless. Yeah. You are listened to right now by probably uncles, mm. to some of those children whose fathers are not there, yeah. you know, cousins and the like, to those children whose uh, fathers are not there. Mm. The father figure is missing. What role would you encourage relatives, I mean, those who are surrounding such children to play in helping out this child in the absence of their father? Yeah, um, one of the strongest things about the African culture in general is this extended uh, family uh, setup. Uh, we don't know how blessed we, we are to have uh, that extended family, although sometimes some things can go wrong. We have uncles around, uh, we have grand fathers around we have all of that and so i realized that uh, one of the things that cushion us a lot is this extended family setup where your uncle becomes your father in the absence of your father ramwani malume uh, grandfather and you know neighbors that old thing although it's it's, it's dying nowadays in this modern world uh, yeah. uh, where the neighbor will be a father figure in your life and bring that uh, balance that is there so uh, going back to your question i'll say it's very important that the community the people around us where they see the need that they must try and chip in and close that gap right yes right. i think the reality that we are looking at right now is like you say is changing yes when we grew up, maybe during our time, mm. there were certain parameters that were set there. Parents were actually present in our lives. Yes. Today, because uh, there's this thing of uh, following career and the like, um, you find that children are probably much of the time on their own. Mm. If anything, they are probably accompanied by gadgets. Yes. And therefore social media. Yes. Uh, TikTok. They, yes, <laughs> yes. They interact with that more. Yeah. Um, and then help us mm. who are happen to be seasonal as well. Yes, because, yes, yes. Uh, you hardly ever find a family which says, uh, oh, we have been with this person for 20 years. Yes. yes, yes. So you wonder how many of those characters in the form of uh, helpers mm. have rubbed shoulders with the children. Mm. I, I just want us to look at it in that reality mm. and say, maybe we need to do a bit of introspection yeah. because we have just been so busy with life. Mm. What would be a word of advice just looking at that? Because we know the results may not necessarily be the most uh, attractive, the most beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually dealing because I'm a counselor full time. I'm dealing with a lot of children who uh, are dealing with the absent uh, mother, father uh, figure because parents are were busy uh, pursuing their career. Uh, it's you know, On one side, it's very important that parents should bring money home, take care of the kids. The school fees are very expensive. So, you know, people work to make sure that they send uh, the children to school. But on the other hand, like you say, children are raised either by helpers at home and uh, the parents are really not involved. When they come from work, rather they are busy uh, or watching TV also, or oh, they, they, they are just too tired to engage the children. And I found that this thing has left a lot of aloneness in many of our children. Uh, remember I said family must be able to give a child a sense of belonging. Yeah. 
uh, a sense of security so a lot of kids because they have to raise themselves through the internet TikToks, facebook's and you know the youtubes uh, you find that even when the parents are there they are so used to being alone that they lock themselves in their rooms and there's no interaction and this thing is really really damaging uh, our our children and just making them loners and they interact with whatever it is that they are watching in their gadgets some sometimes it's violence sometimes it's uh, pornography you know all kinds of things and so there is a, a different breed of human beings that we are breeding and it's not good for character it's not good for the personality it's not good for the community and it's just a challenge in general so as parents that's our responsibility at that stage to make sure that things get right we have to do our best to see how do we uh, the time that we are not available during the weekends uh, the sad thing is that you see during the week we are at work on Saturdays we have funerals, weddings, events, and then now there's this Sunday soccer thing where their father leaves early in the morning and he's gone the whole day. So when do you have time with the parents? Mm. And so we have uh, many um, families where physically the parents may be there, both the mother and father, yeah. uh, but they are absent because they never engage the children. And so uh, the children are basically raising themselves. Yeah. 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 Well, at this point, we're going to take a short breather. It's uh, 6.31 right now. Don't you go away. Just hold on. We will get on to continue with this conversation. But for now, let's take a short breather. 6.35 right now on Duma FM. More talk, more music. Welcome back, uh, dear listener. We are with uh, our guest of honor today, our um, pastor, someone who is so passionate about um, helping people to heal, helping people to discover themselves and actually take the right route if you like. He is passionate about people, let's put it that way, Pastor Mokokwani. And uh, Ramokokwani, we just um, appreciated the importance of the family and the family's uh, uh, role that they play or they have to play in shaping up these children. And uh, earlier on, I was asking you about uh, school, you know, the schools that you went to and probably the teachers that uh, you remember, because they also play a role in that. Yeah. Our children grow from home and then they end up going to schools. Um, what is your word or your observation about what is happening in schools and uh, probably some of the things that we need to take into consideration as far as building character of these children is concerned? Yeah, um, schools are very important um, in shaping the children just as parents are. Uh, there should be a very uh, deliberate attempt between the parents and the teachers to raise uh, kids together. Um, if a child is all alone from home and there's no proper support, there's no intentional character building by the parents because the parents are too busy with their own lives, uh, when they get to school, it becomes very, very difficult for teachers to manage such children. And so uh, I think the partnership of teachers and uh, parents in raising the, the children, uh, parents can just, you know, decide that it's up to the teachers only mm -hmm. uh, for the education of the children. And so it's very, very important that they, there is a proper partnership between the two. What I found out, because I also work a lot with uh, troublesome students from schools, uh, different schools, they call me up or they send some of their, their troublesome uh, students to, to me. What I found out is that mostly the kids that are giving lots of trouble at school, actually uh, their upbringing uh, didn't go very well. There's a lot of neglect at home or there's something is not going right at home. And usually, you see, our parents are the first line of authority. And so when our parents disappoint us or they fail us, we rebel against authority. So we rebel against uh, uh, our parents at home, we rebel against teachers uh, at school, and then later in our lives we rebel against bosses at, at work, and we develop this independent spirit, because usually an independent spirit is just saying, I'm going to do things my way, I, I don't need anyone. Uh, somebody with an independent spirit, when others are going this way, they go the other way. They are usually not a good team player. And so you see that lots of troublesome students uh, at, at, at school uh, have developed this independent spirit because they have kind of um, lost hope in the system 
from home because uh, when parents disappointed you, you just decided you know what there's no authority that i'll ever listen to so uh, troublesome students <laughs> at, at school usually uh, if you investigate further you'll find that something went wrong right at home yeah, yeah. That's quite interesting because now we are talking to parties here, the parents, we are talking to the teachers out mm. there. Uh, when we were growing up, I think there was this element of PTA. Yeah. Your own observation generally, um, is that still so much in place and uh, playing its role or maybe have we lagged a bit and therefore there is a gap um, that... Uh, yeah, um, I think uh, we are in a, a time where there is so many options out there in terms of schools. Uh, there's the private schools, there's the government schools, so it's very difficult uh, to kind of uh, answer for everyone. But where I found the PTA uh, functioning, I found out that uh, actually most of the time you have PTA meetings, annual meetings, once a year, where the parents uh, come to be updated on what's happening in the school and to approve certain programs and all of that. It's not a proper discipleship type of thing where there's a proper partnership between the school and the parents in molding these children. And so, although it is still there, I don't think it's as effective as it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there ought to be some improvement. There's room for improvement. There's room for improvement. And I think we must be intentional in saying, what do we do to mold the characters of our children? Yes. As teachers and, 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 and parents. Exactly. Yeah. Earlier on, when we just getting to appreciate who you are, where you came from, there was the element of being a teenager. Mm. Right now, there is a teenager. Or there are some teenagers who are listening to you right now mm. and uh, probably going through that period of uh, the element of identity that we are talking about. Maybe yeah. That kind of confusion and the like. Mm. What would be your word of advice in terms of uh, maybe the teenager listening to you now in terms of uh, taking charge of the responsibility in terms of uh, what sort of character yeah. they are going to be. Yeah, I think it's very important for all of us actually to understand uh, that we are not responsible for people, we are responsible to them. As a parent, you are responsible to provide education for your child, uh, a good environment to grow and all of that. But ultimately, you are not responsible for how they will respond to whatever it is that you are giving them. So each and every one of us must understand that one of the things that God has empowered us with is free will, the ability to choose. In the world that we live in, we live in a broken world. And this brokenness affects all of us. We can blame our parents, we can blame the teachers that they did not do certain things right, but they also have their own brokenness because of the world that we live in. So each one, the parent, the teacher, and the student must understand that if they misuse their free will, then they are going to reap what they have sown. Actually, the Bible is very clear. God cannot be mocked. Every man shall reap what they have sown. So there is a point where you are a child and everything must be done for you. A parent does everything for you and but there's a time where as you become a teenager and you become aware you must realize that yes some things may not have been perfect in your life but ultimately god has given you the power to choose what you choose to do with the anger that you have is really up to you if you are going to allow that anger to make you a rebellious child who does not want to attend classes who doesn't want to study because certain things did not go the way they wanted you are going to end up in prison. You are going to end up dead. You are going to end up in some criminal, you know, uh, thing. Uh, but if you realize that, yes, uh, you, you, this victim mentality where you want to blame everyone uh, for what you have, you, you have gone through and you don't want to make an effort to become better yourself is very, very dangerous for, for our society. So I want to say to whoever is listening out there to say, look, now that you have a mind of your own, forgive the past. You know, it's very, very important. Uh, forgive the past. Allow your heart to heal because, you see, with a heart that is not healed, the heart that is not healed communicates to the mind to react to the pain. And when you react to the pain, you usually react in a negative way. And you become violent and you rebellious and all of those things. Allow your heart to heal. For your heart to heal, you must acknowledge the pain that you have gone through. You must choose to forgive those uh, who caused you the pain. And the third thing, you must reject the decisions that you made when you had the pain. Because, you see, how you think, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
if you do not reject the decisions that you have made, you are becoming those decisions. Your life is going to be a life full of anger. And when you are angry at the world, that anger goes with you. You may be angry at your mother, but that anger is now yours. It's going to be used against your teacher. It's going to be used against your boss. It's going to be used against somebody on the street. So it's very, very important for all of us to acknowledge that, yes, things may not have gone right and we may have been pained or injustice done to us. Make a choice to forgive. Forgiveness is a, it's a, it's, it's not a feeling. It's a choice. I choose to forgive my mother or my father for not being there, for being absent. When you do that, you are releasing power through your mouth. And so your heart can begin to heal. And then you say, look, I made this decision that I'll never trust anyone in my life. I'm going to be a loner. These are bad decisions. They are not good for me. So I reject those decisions so that I think differently and I can become a better person in the society. Amazing. Amazing. Someone put it this way. They said uh, there are two amazing gifts that God has given us. Mm. One is time, mm -hmm. which runs horizontally. Yes. And the other one is choice, which goes vertical. Yes. And he says, now that line that joins the end of choice mm -hmm. and uh, where you started with time, mm -hmm. it describes your quality of life. Exactly. You see, so I, there's power in choice. There's power in choice. I decided to forgive uh, earlier in my life. You know, I had, I had issues. <laughs> this is very interesting. Yeah. Because my mother was present in my life, I had issues with her for the way she raised me. Okay? Yeah. And because my father was absent in my life, I had issues with the fact that he did not raise me. So you can see either way, in the world that we live in, somebody is going to be wrong and you're right. going to feel wrong the one way or the other. It is while I realized that I needed to forgive my mother for the mistakes that she made when she was trying her best to raise me and my father for not being there, that's when my healing came. Mm. Today, like I said, I've been married more than 18 years. I'm a husband uh, that I have never seen. Why? Because I allowed myself to heal. Yeah. I'm a father that I have never seen. Why? I allowed myself to heal. When you allow yourself to heal, it is the people that will be around you that are going to benefit from your healing. But if you choose to keep the anger, go around angry, it is that anger that is going to destroy even the people that you claim to love. Mm. And that is the sad reality that we have today. Amazing. Even as we said, uh, as a man thinketh, so is he. Mm. Someone has also put it nicely this way. He says the quality of your life is directly related to the quality of your thoughts. Yes. Pastor Mawopani, mm. someone is listening out there and they are saying, where do I start? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just overwhelmed with this anger. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe it's easy talk to say forgive. Yeah. But where do I start? Mm. And uh, my thinking right now is probably we are now talking the thoughts, mm. the quality of the thoughts. Yeah. Maybe you have some suggestions you can help someone to say this could actually be a starting point for you in case you have been trapped and all you saw was darkness and there was no hope. Yeah, what I would say is that one of the biggest mistakes that we make as human beings is to live in denial. We try to be strong, we try to act strong, we try to say, you know, I can make it, I'm strong, I, nothing can break me, whatever. We put up, you know, a face of strength while we are actually uh, crumbling inside. And we have to work very hard to keep up this face again and again until a point. It's almost like we have this anger inside, like a volcano yeah. that is boiling. The mountain is still looking intact. But the day when the pressure goes crazy, pew, you know, the volcano erupts and the, the lava goes down, destroys the villages around, just the fumes, everything. If we continue to live in denial, and, and I'm sorry to say this, even uh, the church has not helped because we have offered people religion, uh, religion which is, uh, you know, like a, it's a spirit of religion where we cover realities uh, with religion, religious practices, praying, uh, going to church, uh, you know, fasting, all of those things. But we do not help people to really deal with the reality of their lives. Yes, you are a Christian, but have you dealt with your rejection issues? So the first thing that we need to understand is that I need to be honest to myself. Yes, I am here. I want to keep it all together, but I'm angry. Something happened in my life that I have not confronted, that I've not dealt with. I've just tried to be strong. Mm. So I would say the first thing is that we must be honest with ourselves. Acknowledge that certain things did happen. And then on the second point of forgiveness, 
I think uh, as a pastor, I would say, you know, when we come to God and ask him for forgiveness, he doesn't put us in a conference call and begin to recall all of our sins and say, remember you did that? You want me to forgive you for this? God freely gives us forgiveness. It's called grace. Yeah. When I acknowledge that I have you know, wronged him, he gives me a, a forgiveness. And because I can freely forg- be forgiven, I can also freely give. Uh, forgiveness to somebody else. Mm-hmm. So when we realize that uh, forgiveness is a choice that I can make because I am also forgiven and you make a choice and you speak with your mouth, I forgive my mother for this failure or for doing that. I forgive my father for this, my colleague for this. And you speak it with your mouth. There's power in what you say. And that anger begin to disappear because you have been keeping it in. You have not been wanting to acknowledge it. And then you realize that uh, uh, this anger has made me think in a toxic way you know i don't desire good things i'm jealous of other people i'm in competition with them because one of the things that happens with rejection is that we react to rejection in four different ways it's performance this is where we are trying to say to people look at me i can do this you are so wrong to reject me how can you reject somebody who is so good like this Mm -hmm. we are living for them not because it's naturally us the second thing that we may do is what we call withdrawal that's when we say i've tried to prove to you guys that i'm a good person but you have no you have not appreciated me so because i don't want to be hurt by your rejection i'll stay in my own corner and withdraw from society and the third one is what you call compliance it's when you become a people pleaser you want to comply to the demands of other people so you don't live your life you live in the life that you think will please other people in the hope that when you please them they will accept you Mm -hmm. when all of these three fail you are now left with the last option the fourth option which is the criticism stage this is where now you are a wounded buffalo you are ready to hit anything that comes your way you are a spitting cobra and you are so bitter inside you have reached what we call the downward spiral of bitterness you are so bitter that anyone who comes close to you your bitterness you don't want to see anyone happy when somebody is happy uh, you are up in arms you're trying to find a fault with them these are people who are who are always criticizing everything mm. you see you have become so poisonous but it all starts with you acknowledging that something went wrong instead of living in denial and not dealing with your pain dear listener um I'm just letting it sink because I think he's painting a reality of what character is. A lot of these things is actually hidden. It's a volcano waiting to, and uh, they say character is who you are when nobody is there. Yes. You know, what is deep inside you. Yeah. Uh, we, we are going to allow, or rather to give opportunity to the listener because... Uh, we are not giving a lecture we we are just sharing and uh, we want to invite you as well we are not pointing fingers at anyone we are actually putting a mirror in front of us as people who love this nation of ours Botswana so if you are out there dear listener and uh, you want to contribute you want to ask question uh, to our guest please do feel free to do so um, and this is how we get hold of them Yes, um, feel free to call us and uh, if you have a contribution to make um, that you think will actually help build our nation, let's do so. If you have a question for um, our guest here, please feel free to do so. Uh, we just have a few minutes where we can do that, but feel free to do that. That's your opportunity. And uh, Pastor <clears throat> No, I'm even getting stuck now. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, we've got someone now calling. Let's uh, get them. Juma FM, hello? Juma FM. Juma, I'm going to see you. Juma FM. I'm going to see you. I'm going to see you. I'm going to see you. I'm going to Ya 
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 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 Okay. Uh, what I was sharing today is all in that book. Okay. And uh, if you, those who want to know more about the ideas that I was sharing, if they can get the book, uh, actually it will help a lot. Okay. It's a book that also comes with a workbook that helps with self-counseling so that you can answer questions that are critical and you'll realize where your wounds are so that you can face your own reality. Right. Hello? Hello, sir. Erra, umur cuma FM Arabi Alemang. Ah, umur Arabi. Arabi. Erra, itu orang yang tu ko mukut sana tak. Nego ni mulut cuma kau ni mu iya fe. Itu orang yang aku ini tu so bukui, ini orang yang aku tu awal. Itu tu awal saya tengah sama kau ni aku kau ni aku awal ni awal. Kata itu. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. God Thank bless. you, sir. Yeah, come on, Ati. Come on, Ati. What are you talking So, buka in a libuka na ya yoni. Eh, ano mo tapo urutwi sa kore to tabay lang kore pa kaba tapo na buka yoy katawa tusa. Um, rinse rin mo siyoko rong mo akaleza. What what provisions would you give someone? Oka more to whom be go. You and Uncle Yakan is a sort of like a room on the Halo is a roof who paid it to a girl on a good for good you. A Kanya or Romo to Ronco, Yako Padraki, who is Harela, a Yanoha, is a daughter or a caraca simula haka, who woke up a fighting Kanyana or a howling howling thing. Homewe o kalebe la sahore 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 zanda zoni timu loho ya loe tola kaho la kwa la fisi kaka ora kasi switchi la uflipa muri ana bikoji la kwanza ya number one you have to acknowledge your pain whatever it is that you have gone through molestation violence you know wrong relationship abuse you need to acknowledge that that thing happened many of us like I said we try to be strong for too long and then we end up breaking so acknowledge it yourself and what I would usually say is that uh, acknowledge it to yourself, acknowledge it to a counselor or uh, somebody you trust, and acknowledge it to God. Mm -hmm. yeah, so those three are very, very important. Talk okay. to yourself, talk to somebody, and talk to God. The second thing, make a choice to forgive. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It will never come a feeling when you feel you have been, uh, you know, injustice has been done against you. Right. And that choice, you make it by your mouth. I choose to forgive this person for doing what they did to me. That There's just power in you saying it out. Right. The third thing is rejecting the decisions that you made as a result of pain. And then the last thing is to ask God to heal you from that pain. Right. Yeah, me, yeah, I'm going to tell you, 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 I'm going to uh, I'm currently offering counseling for free at Avani and for you to make a booking you can WhatsApp this number as seven seven eight three three seven seven nine uh, seven seven yeah eight three three seven seven nine you WhatsApp that number or you call the number uh, the other thing if you follow me on Pastor Muliki Mokwan on Facebook or on Instagram, you should be able to see all of the information of what I do and why I do it. Yeah, so, um, or you can email me at mogo 
kg at gmail.com to make your appointment for to be helped. Ramokwane, thank you so, so much for the precious time that you have taken to come and share with us the precious thoughts that you have, and especially from your experience about how Ramokwane theory, a PhD, or Ramokwane, or Ramokwane, or Ramokwane, or Ramokwane, or Ramokwane, or Ramokwane, or Thank you so much for hosting me tonight. It was wonderful to be here. Dear listener, this is how we come to the end of this particular episode. Because I'm going to give you a direction, my journey. I'm going to tell you about the baking.